This video is sponsored by Crimson Manifesto, Knuckles OX, and Baba Snake. Our story this time would for the most part begin within the first four years after the ending of the Cell Saga and just past the middle of the seven year time skip before the Boo Saga. So far, the timeline has seen no differences from canon really. Goku is off training in the other world. Gohan has gotten well into focusing solely on his studies. Vegeta has taken up a great few binge worthy shows along with his vow to never fight again. And Piccolo has been left to diligently training alone as one of the Z fighters who unfortunately has simply been left behind on account of not being a Saiyan. And this is where we would find the first titular character of this what if, meditating and thinking about all these things, up on the lookout, along with Dende and Mr. Popo. Despite his stoic and lonely nature, the Namekian has by this point become rather nostalgic for what could be considered the good old days, back when he had dedicated training partners with shared goals to break through their limits together. Though to be fair, in most of those times, they had some goal to work towards. While Piccolo has come to have a deep fondness in his heart for both the new guardian of Earth and his genie attendant, they're pacifists by nature and seldom are eager to train their bodies as much their minds in a healthy balance. To put it bluntly, they aren't Gohan, who would he likely be missing quite fiercely as a companion just as much as a training partner. At this point, he would even appreciate Shout to or Yajirobe, and Piccolo could certainly go and see Gohan anytime he wanted to, but it's just not the same as it used to be. Despite him enjoying the peace of this time too, he's beginning to get bored. If you think about it like he would be right now in this story, Piccolo Jr. spent the first eight years of his life being completely self-reliant, self-motivated, and self-interested. Then, he was forced to learn caretaking on top of teaching skills to be a master to Gohan for a year and Gohan in turn was just as equally a master in teaching Piccolo how to show affection and loyalty in ways that aren't inherently violent. Then after giving his life in the battle with the Saiyans, he spent half a year on King Kai's with all the other Z fighters at the time but Goku and Krillin, who just so happened to also be the ones he fought and kind of got to know during the 23rd tourney anyway. So spending time around and being forced to train alongside Tien, Yamcha, and Chiaotzu was another extremely valuable experience for Piccolo in ways that impacted his mentality and character just as much as his power. Even though for the most part, Piccolo is depicted and seems to still be as standoffish as ever with everyone. It's kind of their subtext. All these characters had something in common finally, and that all four of them died in the same invasion because of the bonds, friendship, and faith they placed in each other. Yamcha stuck his neck out against the Cybermen first because Krillin and Chiaotzu had died before. Chiaotzu and Tien died to save and honor each other respectively, and Piccolo died because his love for Gohan overcame his cold hard logic to preserve his own life as inherently valuable. I would even go so far as to personally headcanon that Piccolo simply pondering these things in his meditation and image training under the 10 times gravity of King Kai's planet was part of how he got such massive gains rather than just needing to physically spar. Those epiphanies leading to focus and mindfulness which just so happened to also lead to power in the process. After King Kai's though, Piccolo had the absolutely wild experience of fusing with a fellow Namekian and taking on a genocidal ruler who attempted to conquer his people. Something else which obviously led to a major widening of perspective and self-awareness alongside power. Then after this, the three years he spends preparing for the androids after hearing the messenger from the future trunks his warning firsthand with his heightened hearing. We also see Piccolo go through what is to date his longest period of dedicated training alongside designated training and sparring partners, as he would spend his time with Goku and Gohan, and arguably from how powerful he became even before fusing with Kami, this is also some of the most beneficial, productive, and likely funsless entertaining training Piccolo would have ever undergone, especially if we look at the expanded versions of it, through stuff like filler and movies, where we just see that these three got along super duper well, and arguably always have had great chemistry in and out of battle, ever since they technically defeated Raditz together, so it's actually not that big of a surprise that the trio also represent one of the best examples in the franchise of the benefits of training partners. After reuniting with Kami and undergoing his final major shift in the Z era of the story, Piccolo would kind of see the opposite end of that kind of training in the time team as undertaking the extra one year's training alone, even if it gave great solitude for meditation, most assuredly hampered the growth that Piccolo could have experienced before going to face Cell again. In a way, that will probably be a harsh reminder of the lesson that the Buddhist-like society of the Namekians exemplifies. Cooperation and working with the collective in mind will always lead to better outcomes than a focus on self-enrichment, prosperity, and empowerment. In this spirit, I think Piccolo would find himself pondering who he could recruit as a training partner now, having likely kept loose tabs on everyone's whereabouts and progress, just for his own curiosity. He then Therefore, likely conclude Tien and Chiaotu as his best bets out of the Earthlings, as Krillin has been busy courting Android 18, while Yamcha has seemingly retired from martial arts and taken back up his interest in some sport. He considers Master Roshi and Yajiro before a moment, but concludes it not worth it due to their eccentricities. However, he rather unfortunately concludes that Chiaotu and Tien may be better backup options, as what he really needs right now, if he wants to even think about those levels of power Goku, Cell, and Gohan were fighting with and controlling, then he's going to need a training partner at that level as well, which pretty inevitably leads him to needing a Saiyan, even if he doesn't like it. Sadly, as mentioned earlier, Piccolo will be well aware that options there are limited. Dende is too young and inexperienced to take him to the checkout station, and that sibling of Mutin Roshi can only revive fighters for a single day, so Son Goku is unfortunately a no-go, even though he is likely already to pass any scale of power that Piccolo can currently conceive of. 
And speaking of no-goes, as is Vegeta, even if he were willing to train with Piccolo. After all, his whining and self-pity may become more unbearable than Gohan's ever was. And on that subject, his former disciple is also, as mentioned earlier, far too distracted and absorbing in his studies. And it's already clear he's beginning to lose the very power that Piccolo is coveting on account of not using it. If anything, the Super Namekian would need to spend more time whipping him back into shape than benefiting from having a training partner whose aim is to bring him up to their level. Wait, what about future trunks? Sure, it would require time travel, but if he remembers correctly from Kami's memories, higher level gods have access to some way of messing with time. And even the lookout is equipped with a room that can peer through and simulate training encounters throughout time and space, so it's merely another really good option, which will take a bit of effort. And but by that metric, Piccolo will be better off just going and getting the baby trunks who was born here in the present timeline a few years ago, and training him up like he once did go on. That's actually not too bad an idea, seeing as how he should be around the same age of four he began training Gohan at. Like Goku, Vegeta won't care since as a Saiyan, he surely can't be the kind of helicopter parent that Chi Chi is, and he knows for certain that Boma isn't either, due to how brave and or reckless the genius is. Huh, now that he thinks about it some more, Piccolo even remembers Gohan mentioning something about being even more busy now that he has a little brother to help Chi Chi with, and if the math checked out, he wouldn't be much younger than Trunks either. With a cunning scheme brewing, Piccolo would set off to see how things will work out, still keeping some of his backup options in mind as he heads towards Mount Pauzi and his largest obstacle. Arriving at Gohan's house, he'd find it to be just a bit louder than it would have been in some of his prior visits, since there now happens to be a three-year-old brat who is the spitting image of Goku darting around and playing, displaying a pretty immense and exhausting amount of energy in the process. Landing at the door and knocking, he'd be first met with Chi Chi, who's expecting our youngest, and then disapprovingly calls out to Gohan to say it's for him, with both the mother and the honorary man of the house in front of him now. Piccolo can rather calmly and reasonably lay out his thought process, since he knows for certain Gohan will at least hear him out and think on things. Once proposed, though, Chi Chi would of course be mortified at the idea, both on account of the fighting and the impact this could have in turning Goten into a delinquent as well, as this would also most likely be before she herself tried to train Goten. However, I think here Piccolo could employ some craftiness by just telling the truth and making a good argument, citing that unlike Son Goku who had Master Roshi, Gohan's first teacher was him, and he pretty much personally saw to it that Goku's child would grow to be almost nothing like his father, aside from that astounding strength. If anything, Piccolo is one of the main reasons Gohan isn't a delinquent as Chi Chi says, even having originally been the one to point out the issue in Goku's plan to defeat Cell. So if he's allowed to take care of Goten now, he can basically do so again, making sure that Goten grows a lot more like Gohan than Goku. And in the process, he can also remove some of the burden on the two of them, which would better allow Gohan time to focus on his studies, and maybe even hopefully find the time to train and exercise again in Piccolo's bay. To this point, I think Gohan would actually back Piccolo up pretty readily, citing he makes a very salient point. And what's more, a bit of the Saiyan in him may get excited at the idea of Goten getting stronger into Piccolo's tutors like he once did, so that one day, he can fight his little brother himself and test his strength. The idea could even make him want to train a little bit, though he's smart enough to leave that part out. Ultimately, I believe G2 would ponder things for at least a couple of days, but in the end would likely agree, seeing more upsides than downsides, and recognizing that Piccolo is not the same demon now who had once tried to brutally kill her fiancé in front of her. Meanwhile, in that time, Piccolo would have likely already approached Bulma at Capsule Corp and had a much easier time with things there, as I really doubt Bulma would want to turn down a free nanny, richest woman on earth or not. Also, Trunks is already starting to turn into a little bit of a brat compared to his future version, so I'm sure that Bulma would also appreciate the help in reining him in. Beyond that, when Vegeta does get a chance to have his two cents in the conversation, he isn't really interested enough to hear, though Piccolo is at least happy to see that he seems to at least be exercising and somewhat training regularly at least. It's better than Gohan is the point. This sees us finding ourselves finally in a serene mountainscape near a nice pond, which Piccolo will eventually go on to claim as his home and even magically materialize his own house at. But for now, it serves at the point that the newly appointed nanny Piccolo brings his charges to after picking them up. He would have taken them to the lookout, but the Kami and him balks at the balking towards tradition. Upon truly meeting Goten and Trunks for the first time, Piccolo will be happy to see that they are great friends already, which means he at least doesn't have to deal with any immature squabbling, or at least not a ton. But Piccolo likely wouldn't be happy to see that they each lack even a fraction of the discipline, shyness, and manners that Kid Gohan had. Well, Goten kinda does when not following Trunks' lead, but Trunks really is notably nothing like the version of himself which grew up in such hard times, just like Bulma had said. However, after having done all that thinking, pondering, experiencing, and growing on his journey as an Amekian, warrior, individual, and part of the community that is the Z Fighters, I think Piccolo could really easily adapt to this, and better yet, get himself on a wavelength where he can understand and truly get along with the boys. I'm talking that same kind of connection with young Gohan where it was clear that even though there was a slight power gap and age gap, the two friends developed a deep and genuine respect for one another. 
so I think Piccolo would truly try to get on the boys' level. Little things like instead of constantly and harshly insisting they spar and meditate all the time, he does stuff like trying out Trunks' video games sometimes. Maybe even getting unnaturally good since he has such a well-suited mind for rules and tactics and strategies, which is something that could easily earn Trunks' respect in a way that even Vegeta would be unable to. And by proxy, that'd be earning Goten's respect as well. However, I think Piccolo could do this in any way by simply taking an interest in what the boys do. If they like a particular TV show, maybe he tries to give it a watch. He likely would hate it, but the thought would count, and it would again show he is trying to respect their interests, which would naturally elicit some in his. Also, just a fun aside, magic materialization would be absolutely awesome for creating like custom toys and figurines, which I'm sure the boys could have a ton of fun with. Like imagine Piccolo making a bunch of Warhammer miniatures or character statues for a D&D game he plays with them. That would be both incredibly cute and wholesome, but also moments I could see meaning a lot to all three of them, just like that talk Piccolo and Gohan had over the campfire about how Goku didn't think Junior was all that bad. If Piccolo could do even just a little bit of that and keep that energy up, I think he could easily establish a bond of Master and Disciple with Goten and Trunks, far before the Boost Saga where he would also be challenged to do so naturally and would pretty much fail hilariously at it. The most interesting question here though becomes how much could this new bond really change in only three years before the Boost Saga? And there honestly may be a perfect way to answer that before directly rushing into it just yet. But for now, I think the obvious implications should be discussed. Number one, Piccolo, Trunks, and Goten would all get stronger than in canon, duh. But by how much really depends on how creative, wacky, or in-depth you want to get with things. Like on the surface level, we do have the hard fact that Piccolo would likely be the one to discover the boys can become Super Saiyans at far younger ages and with far more ease than any he's ever seen before, which also denotes a higher level potential than any he's seen as of yet as well. So that alone could easily see Piccolo inspired to take the boys through the same training undergone by the Saiyans and the Android side. In order to give them access to the higher grades of Super Saiyan, along with mastery, and hopefully a power beyond it in the form of Super Saiyan 2, making them even better training partners in the process. Actually, this would mean the combination of the three of them training together would be largely more intense and harder training than what any other Saiyan or just plain warrior in the universe is undergoing currently, including Goku. But to be fair, that's because most people are also training by themselves at this point. But that alone could have a ton of changes, not even looking at the other factors. And our number two obvious factor is that there is a lot of in a way procedural or just kind of initiatory stuff that Piccolo could take the boys through just viewing it as a necessary experience that one has to go through as a member of the Z Fighters. Stuff like climbing Corrin's tower and training with the cat for the potential unlocking ultra divine water training under Mr. Popo or against perfect dolls of themselves, or even better yet, inside the pendulum room, so that that way they can relive all the famous battles they missed so far, from the showdowns at the World Martial Arts tournaments and against the original Demon King Piccolo, all the way to the recent events of the Cell Games, and Gohan's battle against the titular bio-android ultimate life form, seeing them fight with, against, and trained alongside tons of different heroes from history, significant ones like Kid Goku, who Goten would be an absolute shock and awe to meet, or even the battles of the future Trunks, who present Trunks would be in a similar place of aberration for. Beyond this, there is also the Time Chamber itself, which he could easily decide to have them use earlier, but as it is peacetime, that feels unlikely. He could very easily lose his nanny privileges if he brings the boys back a year older. What there is is another very easy option, however, is Vegeta's Gravity Chamber, which I'm sure Trunks would already be curious about and I could easily see Piccolo being interested in either flaunting the power he and the boys had begun to develop together, or very sneakily deciding to keep it on the low, just so they can surprise Gohan and Vegeta as much as possible, and hopefully give them the shocks they need to get back into their training seriously. As we do know from Superhero that Piccolo likes to be just a bit manipulative. And by the way, if we are mentioning the Ultra Divine Water, we should also mention the concept of Elder Guru's potential unlock, which Piccolo could also be reminded of, and could also view as heavily beneficial for the boys, considering just how much hidden potential they have. And while at it, he may as well get something like that done for himself, which alone has very heavy implications. That would also run Piccolo into asking Dende about this a lot sooner, and in the process learning more about it, which could pretty easily initiate a Dragon Ball hunt, just for the sake of unlocking their potential through Shinron, or even giving Dende the ability to unlock potentials while he is still young. But either or, hunting the Dragon Balls would be another kind of rite of passage as a Z-Warrior. Piccolo could take the boys through, and not to mention, it's fun, and it's something which could also have monstrous consequences far before the Buu Saga arrived. And finally, I think it should just be mentioned that these three characters, and by proxy Gotenks, as he is the fusion of Goten and Trunks, would also vibe remarkably well in a longer form of dedicated training, 
because they are each some of the most creative fighters in the entire Dragon Ball franchise when it comes to different and unique ways to apply, control, and weaponize ki, as they each have a ton of named attacks and techniques and different ways to use them. So it almost goes without saying, but the brainstorm sessions, image training, and tweaking of a lot of the cool super moves that Goten and Trunks naturally come up with already would not only be dialed up to about a 50 probably, but would also be highly refined and disciplined by Piccolo and his teaching style. And finally, not to mention that as a fuse being himself and with a pre-established connection as a teacher to the boys, Piccolo in this verse would be pretty uniquely equipped to help Goten and Trunks truly master and possibly even evolve fusion maybe even through a myriad of different types of fusion, rather than just with the easily messed up metamoran dance. There are truly endless ways to go about and interpret how something like this would turn out, and how it would affect the other characters both in terms of our heroes and our villains. I first want to know your thoughts on what we have so far though. Is anyone deeply out of character here? Can this really change all that much or will it change too much? Can a scenario that starts so late in the timeline really even change too much? And because of that late start in the timeline, and the fact that we would even technically have stuff like Daima, GT, and Super to add to it, I'm super excited to see how this one could develop further out. But that's where we'll be leaving this one off for right now.